Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, November 27th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of material science. Some physicists from the U.S. Department of Energy have been investigating a new ultra-thin material that could revolutionize some technologies. If you are a longtime viewer, you know that we don't often cover stories about graphene or carbon nanotubes. It's not that we don't see their potential. It's just that, in the world of science news, those materials are basically the popular song that gets played on the radio too much. These physicists have been working on predicting the properties of materials known as topological insulators. Essentially materials that can conduct electricity, but only on their outermost surface. But what would happen if such a material was only one atom thick? According to their calculations, you would get a superconductor if you made such a material from the metal tin. Since graphene is also one atom thick, and working off the Latin name for tin, they have dubbed this theoretical material stannine. Now, they haven't actually made this material yet, but it could have some incredible properties. Not only is it a superconductor, allowing for 100% efficiency in the transfer of electrons, but it will do so at or above room temperature. Adding fluorine to this material may even allow its superconductivity to work at temperatures around the boiling point of water. With such encouraging theoretical work, the next step is figuring out how to actually create it and test it. But the physicists believe that stannine could be integrated into computer chips at critical junctions to increase speed and energy efficiency, and eventually even replace silicon as the primary material used in circuitry, allowing for a new generation of faster and cleaner computers. Next is a quick update from the world of evolution. A team of scientists from Spain have been studying the genomes of organisms and have used this to map the evolution of those organisms. All cells divide by first replicating their entire genome to go to their daughter cells, but many organisms have a specific order as to which parts of the genome replicate first and which parts replicate last. Those genes that replicate first seem to be the oldest, with the genome as a whole roughly replicating from oldest to youngest genes. Generally speaking, older genes are highly conserved and common to many organisms because they are vital to very basic life functions. By replicating first, the scientists think there is a reduced chance of mutations to these vital genes, while at the same time it increases the likelihood of mutations to newer genes because the proofreading mechanisms have already been working a while in the cell. Even though any mutation can be dangerous to an organism, this pattern of replication may be advantageous to evolution as a whole. Newer genes in the history of a species are less likely to be critical to sustaining life, and by allowing them to mutate more frequently, it essentially gives evolution a laboratory to do experiments with. With this mechanism, entirely new genes will tend to accumulate outwardly from the previous new genes. While this work is preliminary, it does offer an entirely new way to examine the evolutionary history of organisms, by seeing in what order certain genes are replicated prior to cell division. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our first story, what would you do with room temperature superconductor? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.